Yeah, I have worked at sea, which is quite surprising because Mam will even say I was did not inherit my parents' sea legs as a child. But yeah, I applied for summer work after after finishing university. It, it was obviously a good a good wage at the time. But lots of people were were employed just for the summer season, so it was something that, that students did tend to do. So I applied for summer work in 1994. Whatever I, I was hoping actually for a shore job, but then. Um, Human, human Resources deployed me on the new Vistena Sea Links, which was just being launched on the route. Um, and it was sort of marketed as the fastest sea route to Ireland. I remember having a t-shirt that said, you know, Fishka to Rosslear in 90 minutes. So yeah, that's, that's where I ended up. So I was largely just there for, for the summer season for a few months. And then the rest of that year then, I, um, I was in the travel center in the harbor as well. More sort of booking tickets and checking people in so it would be checking in foot passengers and then car passengers as well. I was actually okay in the end. When I, I don't know whether it was when I was actually doing the job, I was so busy and didn't have time to think about it. But yeah, I was actually fine. So no, I, I did really like it when I was on. It was, it was, it was good fun. I think because it was a, a new service, the crew were all very young and most of them, like me, you know, were new to the role, so that, you know they hadn't done anything like that before. And it was funny actually; the uniforms were modelled very much on kind of an airline, and I think they were marketing themselves as this fast, swift service. So even my name badge—I think I've still got it in my mum somewhere. It says cabin crew rather than sort of uh, steward or stewardess. It, it was lovely. We um, we trained actually in Hollyhead. We did some training up there. I remember having to do sea survival only in a swimming pool, mind. And then we also went over to Dunleary for some training. And I remember driving back actually, and Ireland was kind of, there were just loads of flags everywhere because Ireland were, were qualified. They were in the World Cup at the time. So yeah, I, I do remember that when uh, I was over there. Yeah, it was, really, it was really busy. That that first season that, I, that the Lynx um, ran out of fish, it was really busy. And, you know, lots of locals would travel back and forth from both sides. And the early sailing from Ross Lear would be sort of full of families because they used to um, run trips to Oakwood and Folly Farm today as well. Yeah, I, th I think the maximum passengers, something like 120, 130. So most of the time, you know, oh no, that was cars. Yeah, vehicles was about 100. But most of the time on those early crossings, they would be jam packed then, yeah. You could go out at seven o'clock in the morning from Fishguard on the catamaran and then come back. I can't remember when the evening one, it was probably around maybe sort of six o'clock from Ross Lear, I can't remember. So you could have an actual day there. All the crew were, were Welsh or, or British. Some of the officers were Irish, but it all seems to have, all seemed to have been recruited from sort of this side of the water. 